So I'm gonna start out this part by showing you the bonus content of Link's Awakening DX, or at least some of it anyways. This is the camera shot. This doesn't appear in the original Game Boy version, as I'll show you later. It's, it's just an empty screen, for the most part. Yeah, this was confusing. Like, I was very clearly standing where he wanted me to. But, I was in the back of the room. Why was nothing happening? God, that's the biggest complaint I have about getting the photos, is that sometimes the game doesn't decide to make a picture get taken. It's not just Marin that calls you thief in all capital letters after you steal from the shop. It's also the cameraman. Although he's the only other example of an NPC that calls you by your name, other than Marin, that I can think of. Because I don't remember any, I don't remember any NPC other than Marin and him calling you by your name. So, even though your name has changed, it really doesn't matter all that much. And if you name yourself Thief to begin with, then it definitely doesn't matter. So I'm going to be showing off how to get almost every picture. The annoying thing is that it's completely impossible to get every single picture in the game because... There are two potential pictures you can get when you first meet the cameraman. If you, if you say no to his request, then you get the game over picture. Because he intimidates you and stuff. So you can only get one of two pictures for your first picture. Which means that you're going to have an empty slot in your camera book. And there's nothing you can do about it. If you have the Game Boy printer, which is an accessory exclusive to the Game Boy Color, then you'll be able to print these pictures out. I mean, I'm pretty sure that's exclusive to the Game Boy Color, because in Pokemon Gen 2, then you can print out unknowns, which, or rather, unknown, because Pokemon are pluralized without an S at the end of it, because they're Japanese names. But anyways, you can print out writing in unknown, which are basically the Pokemon that look like real alphabet letters, only they look really weird. But you can't use the Game Boy printer at all in Gen 1 Pokemon. So that's why I think it's exclusive to the Game Boy Color. We just passed by Richard's house. I mean, I think it's pronounced Richard because he's very clearly French. And he also has a bunch of frogs hopping around his house. I mean, that's pretty obviously a stereotype. I guess I should disapprove of Zelda for that. Although they do actually eat frog legs, in France at least. I've heard that they taste like fried chicken. So like, even though, like, like you think, okay, I'm a girl, I'm gonna be all like, ew, gross, but if it tastes good, then I, I'd be open to eating it. Especially like, if it looks like fried chicken. If it's all cooked and stuff, then I definitely wouldn't be opposed to eating it. Old man Orira here. That's another weird name to pronounce. Still hate that enemy, by the way. Another complaint I have about the pictures is that it takes a long time for them to... Because they go into a cutscene. And I guess that can be annoying on repeated playthroughs. Although I do love the, the witty dialogue and the humor of it. They, they're very clearly, the art style seems to be using something very close to the in-game sprites. There, there's an unused sprite of Link when it comes to the camera cutscenes. That it looks weird, so I can understand why they didn't use it. You can't give him the bananas when you have Bow Wow with you, because Bow Wow will attack him. And that prevents you from progressing to the next part of the game with Bow Wow. That's a shining example of how this game is a lot more linear than any of the previous Zelda games. It is impossible to complete a dungeon in the wrong order. Well, in the DX version, of course. Something I really love about the original version is that there's a glitch you can do that can basically allow you to complete the dungeons in almost any order you want. 
Although, the game still has it where you need items from previous dungeons to beat dungeons that come later. Like, you definitely need the rock's feather. The glitch! Well, I don't want to spoil too much about it by talking about it too much now. But, let's just say that the glitch does a lot to alleviate the problem of you not having the correct item to progress to the dungeon. But it still doesn't feel like... Like, you can potentially beat the dungeons in reverse order. Like, there's actually a hilarious Let's Play out there by Mecha Prime, I think he's called. And he completes the dungeons in reverse order while hilariously pretending that he's playing the game normally. And... Well, the problem is that, well, you can reach all the dungeons in reverse order using that glitch. You can't complete them normally because you don't have the items necessary. Like, you can't jump over holes because you don't have the rock's feather until the first dungeon in the game. And you can't so much as lift jars until a certain point. I hate this enemy so much. He's so annoying. His his attacks, his bombs blast you forwards in, in a random direction. And it's so easy for you to get hit by them and he deals so much damage and he keeps popping out of one hole into another. Anyways, you got to you got to go through a, a little side quest. That again isn't really a side quest cuz you need it to complete the game. You need to find all the gold leaves in order to get this Richard fellow to to allow you access to his backyard where you'll be able to get the slime key. I'm not sure why it's called the slime key when the next dungeon is not called slime anything and doesn't even have a large amount of slime enemies in it. That's, that's another thing, like, not only is this Zelda game a lot more linear, but it also introduces you spending a lot more time in the overworld than previous games just to get to the next dungeon. In Zelda 1, I spent a lot of time in the overworld, but that was from getting heart containers to upgrade my sword. Which, I don't know if that's mandatory or not, it probably is. But, the point is that in Zelda 1, you're not forced to spend so much time in the overworld to get to the next dungeon. And in Link to the Past, you, I guess you're forced to be in the overworld to get to the next dungeon. That's the case with any Zelda game. But it's not like you have to complete long side quests to get to the next dungeon. I don't mind that though, because I don't just play Zelda games for the dungeons. I play them for the satisfaction of accomplishing a task, whether it's in a dungeon or not. The dungeons are the best part of the game, but I don't think that it ruins the game when there's too much so-called padding between dungeons. I mean, what even determines padding in a Zelda game anyways? As long as you're accomplishing something, I don't really see how it's a waste of time. I always have a hard time remembering how to get back to the Seashell Mansion. It's to the northeast of the place with the, the flying Octorox and the holes all over the place. I hate the flying Octorox, by the way. They're so annoying to deal with. They're so... They constantly dodge your attacks. And... And usually when you try to attack them in the air, suddenly they're on the ground. I like the way this place looks, though. So, so something I haven't talked about yet is the map of this game. This game is different from Zelda 1 in that there actually is a map instead of a crappy radar. But it's different from Zelda, but it's different from Link to the Past because the map doesn't show you everything in a screen. Like in, in Link to the Past, when you looked at the map, you could see pretty much everything in the game. But here they just show you one really tiny square 
that has a very vague telling of what's on that screen. And sometimes y you can press the A button and it'll give you the name of the territory that it's in, like Ukuku Prairie or whatever. This game has a lot of weird names. Like, Ukuku is, sounds very Japanese, even though it's not in Japan. And as I mentioned before, you, you can press A on screens that are the owl screens on the map, and you can have him tell everything he told you all over again. So, I think the map is very crappy in this game, because it's not like A Link to the Past. And because of that, it, it helped contribute to the fact that it was really hard for me to remember how all the screens connected to each other in the overworld. It took a long time for me to almost memorize the overworld this game. Because it has a Zelda 1 problem all over again. Only slightly better because there's an actual map this time around, but you can't really see it. See, he says Trebian. So he is French. And I think he might even have a French hairstyle as well. I like his cape. Like, I love his getup. And when you save and quit, you reload in the building that you were in. Or if you saved and quit outside, then you reload just outside the last building or cave you merged from. So the save system is a lot better than it was in Link to the Past. Unfortunately, it removes the option of being able to start from multiple different places. And that's a huge problem because if you have a glitch where you're stuck in a wall, and when you reload your file you're still stuck in that wall, then you pretty much have a dead game because there's nothing you can do to get out of it. Because in A Link to the Past, I said it before, but the Game Boy Advance version Link to the Past had the best save system in all of Zelda because not only could you choose to start from the Sanctuary or from Link's house, but you could also start from exactly where you saved in the overworld, or start from the dungeon that you saved at. This game should have done that. I don't know if it was possible on the system. Maybe? This game really should have done that because with the glitches that this game has, at least from the original version, it's a lot easier to get stuck in a wall and not be able to get out of it. And then there's no way that you can progress to the game if you save because you can't choose to start in another place other than the last place you were at. You can cheat this maze by jumping over it incorrectly. I did it the wrong way. But basically, if you're at the southwest corner there, then you can you can destroy the the bushes to the north of you, and then just jump over them. You can actually do it a lot faster than I did. I think there's a glitch where you can unlock that you can unlock that keyhole from the north of it. But I wasn't able to get it to work no matter what I did. I think you hold down the B button with the sword equipped to it and face north near it. But I couldn't get it to work because there's something to the north of that keyhole blocking it. <laughs> 